Hello and welcome into the Road to Wire Esports Show. My name is Andrew Laird, joined as always by Ethan Sexton today to talk about Tuesday's two-game LPL slate. Um, Ethan, I just want to start this off by saying there's a non-zero chance that uh, the windows next to me just explode from the snowstorm that's happening outside. So please don't be alarmed if it happens. No problem. Uh, it looks like it's very lightly snowing outside my window, but uh, I already did one pass with the snowblower in the driveway before we jumped on here and uh, expect him to go back out, you know, either later today or tomorrow morning at some point, I guess. But yeah, we're we're close enough that uh, I think we're both getting hit by the same storm, just different ends of it, maybe. Yes, um, we I've already been out. I was just out shoveling for about an hour and it looks <laughs> like I didn't even go out, which is one of the most frustrating things. I was like, oh, I'll just get some out now and then we'll be fine later. And uh, we're not going to be fine later. It's it's a lot anyway. Um, <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Sorry, my, my Skype uh, glitched out there, but yeah, I, enough snowstorm, I guess, right? Right. TLDR, it's snowing. Um, so uh, Tuesday, or excuse me, Monday's slate, we saw, at least the GPP I was in, saw a 4-2-1 take it home, Sooning leading the way, of course. Um, and then it, so it was four Sooning, two BLG, one RNG, the old uh, Gala one-off. Why not? Um, yeah. But... I guess I want to say we, I mean, BLG winning shouldn't be like overly crazy. I think we would have been much more surprised at Sooning dropping uh, that series. So, I I mean, I I can't get too upset. It was a two game slate. It kind of went how it it can go. And uh, I think we just move on from there. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not too, I wasn't too like worried about it. I definitely thought RNG would win. And I think we alluded to that yesterday, but I think we also made it, you know, fairly clear at least in my mind that if one of those two series today uh ended with an upset it was more likely to be the blg rng one but uh i thought thought rng would take care of business maybe in a 2-1 but uh you know they they fell for the first time this year and props to blg they they look good the last two games especially so <clears throat> i was gonna say uh, a little reverse sweep i thought we we were we were heading to the uh i yeah. had uh rng sooning same right with a blg oh. one-off so that so even the so going to three was actually not going to be that bad but right. it was when rng lost it, i was toast at that point yeah i was in good shape i think i was in third in uh in a gpp um after game one of that series uh and then i think i was only duplicated with one other person too so that's uh, that's pretty good for uh yeah for a two game slate and uh but then once rng lost game two i i figured i was kind of screwed at least from winning because, you know, a lot of people around or ahead of me had a BLG team slot. So that kind of pushed them over the edge. And yep. then, of course, you know, once BLG won, a lot of a lot of lineups that played BLG sooning combinations passed us by anyway. But no big deal. Uh, on, to, on to Tuesday. And Tuesday's slate, you know, uh, correct me if you don't feel the same way, or uh, but Tuesday's slate kind of feels like today's slate. Uh, really, you know, you've got EDG as today's sooning a big favorite against a, a weaker opponent and then you've got a wes today's rng against a, a solid opponent so that makes our uh, rare adam tomorrow's uh underdog we're gonna we're gonna look at a little bit harder i think uh i completely agree um and i'm just like yesterday be like i still think both favorites are gonna win and so i'll probably try to build my lineups accordingly but um yep. <clears throat> it's not that uh like victory five, uh, not as bad as LGD though. So like, that's true. Um, and EDG is better than Sooning. Yep. So, so I feel like the gap at least should be bigger. Oh, well, maybe not. Maybe it's equal an equal gap. But uh, I guess I'm. I'd be. I would have been significantly more impressed with a LGD victory than a than a whatever we have tomorrow. Yeah. Than a victory sure. five win tomorrow. Um, or yesterday, excuse me. Um, so really, who? where do you go for your long stack? Uh, I think it's, for me, it's going to be EDG. I, ju- I just see that one as the more likely to be a sweep, uh, in my opinion. Um, you know, WE on the other side there in the other matchup, bringing in a, a new mid laner in Yi Meng. Uh, don't know a lot about him, to be honest. He gives you a, a $200 salary savings off of Shanks. Um, so you can build... I think you might be able to build. I'm not 100% sure, but I think you can build a double mid if you want to go that way with the two favorites. Um, 
So the question we have to, I guess, figure out or at least be wary of is, does Yi Ming coming in and replacing Shanks uh, make the matchup any better for Rare Adam? Uh, it's really hard to say because I've never seen this guy play. Uh, don't really know his champion pool or anything like that. Um, so I'm not sure it really makes the, the biggest difference necessarily. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, it's his first game with the on the stage, at least, with, with the team. So maybe that's a way Rare Adam can find a win in an upset. Um, but yeah, as far as for the long stack, I think I'm looking at EDG. It just feels like that's the safer of the two games uh, to be a sweep. Although, you know, V5 could come out and win a game, wouldn't really shock either of us, I don't think. Uh, but to me, it seems like EDG are the safer of the two teams, or the two series to be a, to be a 2-0 tomorrow. So we have all the champion stats on Rotowire. Um and I'm looking at Ye Ming's right now. What, as somebody who doesn't play the game, play the game at all, uh, I mean, I'm sure the people who are who've been watching our videos know that that's probably the case. Um, what do I look for for a mid laner champion pool? Like, what am I? What do I want to see? Well, you know, I'm look, I'm trying to navigate there. I guess so. I apologize. So you know, it looks like he plays a lot of uh, a lot of LeBlanc, a lot of Galio, a lot of Zoe. Uh, those are kind of standard picks, you know, like the Galio is more of like a team centric pick, uh, kind of moves around the map a bit more, kind of like, a like if we saw Twisted Fate, it'd be the same. I don't see Twisted Fate in his champion pool at all, which is a little weird, uh, for this meta, but it's down on the uh, bottom. Yeah, Two I mean, games. like, a, 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 a champions like LeBlanc and Zoe Aurelia that are at the top of his list are a bit more of a carry oriented picks in the mid lane, whereas like a a Galio or some other things are more like team or supportive wise. So, uh, you know, last year we saw a lot of teacher Ma on the twisted fate and the Galio doing a lot of roams to the bottom lane, uh, to get Ju Meng and missing ahead. Okay. That was kind of WE's like ingrained play style last year is they would, uh, take the mid laner and the jungler bottom and get, get their bottom lane ahead. Uh, they haven't been doing that as much this year, but I wonder if he may, he may picks up the, uh, the Galio, and they put him on the Galio tomorrow. If they kind of go back to that that style, where uh, basically last year they used to ignore top lane completely and just four man focus on bottom lane a lot. So I wonder if we'll see that again, or could be it could be in the cards. Does that make you not like um, like missing in Juming because there's less going on down there? Or was it the opposite? Uh, they, well, they haven't, that they haven't up? exactly been. They've been fine, I think, this year. Um, they haven't been like the main focal point. Like we've seen uh, Beijing focus a little more on top lane this year, and uh, that's been to the to the uh, advantage of uh, Breath Breath. I, I always screw it up, man. I forget which way he pronounces his name. I've listed the broadcast many times, but whatever. But um, yeah, they're not. They're not like focusing they're not like forcing plays in the bottom lane so i think juming and missing are still fine you know they're still pretty good solid bottom lane uh with with good upside but uh it's just that we aren't really forcing that play style as much this year uh that we've seen so far so um it's it's not to say that uh those guys still aren't certainly good good plays or anything like that but uh you know maybe they're just not the, the it's not it's not we's main focus this season i guess is how i would put it okay. at least it hasn't been so far yeah, I guess the way I was looking at it was if it if it's a significant improvement or detriment, does that just like even more solidify EDG long stacks? Like, should I? I don't know. It just doesn't. To me, to me, it's just more that you know, if if I see an upset, like if I look at these two matchups, and it's it's just one man's opinion, so take it with a, a grain of salt. But when I look at the two matchups, I just I just feel better about EDG getting a two zero, like. I could definitely see Rare Adam winning against uh, WE tomorrow. It wouldn't really surprise me at all. Uh, but I can also see, you know, if WE win, maybe they don't get a sweep. It's just a 2-1. Uh, they drop a game, you know. So then you're looking at EDG. I just feel like EDG are the better bet to sweep. And then, you know, you're getting that games not played bonus on four people potentially or uh, however you're looking to make your lineup. So it just – those add up a lot. So, you know, you kind of got to factor in if the sweep – the sweet potential in these series, you know, against, especially when it's like top teams versus uh, lower half teams like this. So that's kind of just what, how I feel about EDG. I just think they're the safer bet. Uh, that RAWE kind of feels more like a 2-1 one way or the other to me. Okay, that makes sense. 
Um, because you can do, uh, I think you can do, if you long stack WE, you can do that uh, mid captain. Yep. You can do double mids. Do you think that's going to be more popular than double jungler? Well, I wonder because, um, you know, we've seen double jungle be pretty good this year. We've talked about how junglers are, are scoring really well so yeah. far this season. Uh, and I wonder, too, if people, um, if they think about going double mid, I wonder if people will be a little bit nervous because if WE drops game one, do they just bring Shanks right back in for game two? Uh, so that's something that, you know, might give people some pause on on going the double mid route. Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like double jungle might be a bit popular. You know, both JJ and, and Bei Shang are, are two of the better junglers in the league, um, guys that can play these carry picks and stuff. So <laughs> I think that's the safer route. Uh but it might also end up because we've seen jungler score so well. I think it it might also be you know the 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 best way to go, <laughs> um, since we've seen double jungle outscore double mid quite a bit. And then you throw in the fact that you know, uh, Yi Mang might not be long for the series if they drop game one, and it certainly at least would give me pause about uh, using him either as a captain or even just in the regular mid lane spot. Sure. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I wonder if you'll even see double jungle if. People play V5 just because, like, Weiwei <clears throat> leads them in kill participation. So, like, you're at least yep. getting something there. Um, did we... Um, I actually skipped his trigger starting. Nope, Y4 no, is it. Y4, okay. Um, yeah. yeah, I wonder if, like, instead... Uh, like, the, the very basic uh, way that people use underdogs is just that you can fit in double 80 carries. But like right. that doesn't necessarily mean that's the only way you can go. Like you, <clears throat> of course, double jungle uh, with an underdog leaves you at like forty three thousand in salary, probably. Um, yeah. Which always throws people off. But I wonder if that's a way that some people could at least consider going, just because um, it's just different. Yeah, it's, uh, certainly on these two gamers, you know, it's definitely never, never really a bad thing to kind of mix up your. Uh, mix up your lineup just so you can try to get, you know, the hardest thing to do on these two game slates is to get a unique lineup. Yeah. So, you know, some, sometimes you got to get kind of funky and, and do some weird stuff and, and try to go from there. Uh, yeah. So we could see that potentially. It's just always that, you know, like we talk about the mental block aspect of the, Hey, I've got four grand in salary. I yeah. should use some, but it's not always the best way to go with league of legends as we know. So, yeah, I feel like, uh, you know, we get extra points for, 10 kills or assists. Like, I feel like you should get three extra points if you have a unique lineup. Yeah, there you go. Just, just a thought. Um, it is difficult to do, that's for sure. Right. Um, yeah, a, a V5 WE jungler lineup is like 45. The lowest one I have here is 45-3. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Um, left over. I don't know. Well, I I mean, we both know you're not doing it, so it's, it's okay. Uh, that's for sure. <laughs> Um, no, I'm not on V5 at all tomorrow. Right. So, so obviously, WE, uh, Rare Adam game stack is the one you think is more likely to, to work than Victory 5 against EDG. Yeah, just because, you know, the likelihood of that one going 2-1 either way is, is to me, much higher than, than the EDG V5 one. Yeah. I'd, be, I'd really be surprised. Like, we saw EDG lose for the first time last week, but... Uh, or no, we didn't, excuse me, uh, EDG are still undefeated, I should say. Um, so they haven't lost yet in the league, and it's just, I don't know, I just don't even see them really dropping a game to this V5 team, to be honest. Um, V5 are just kind of like, you know, we saw them lose a Thunder Talk Saturday, so maybe it's clouding my judgment a little. Um, but it feels like, you know, EDG have been really clean this year. We said the same thing about RNG yesterday, though, or for today's slate, though. Yeah. Um, but to me, it just feels like R and or excuse me, EDG. If I can get the team straight, uh, should close that one out two zero. I'd be I'd be surprised if they dropped the game, honestly. But uh, it's it's just that rare Adam WE series is the one that you know I could see two one either way. Um, so yeah, if you're looking at game stack, I think that'd be the one because obviously you know if you game stack and uh, your losing team gets swept, you're not getting very many points. <laughs> Do you know how many forty kill series? EDG has had this season? I do not, to be honest. I could, I could uh, look, but, you know, not off the top of my head. Sorry about that. Uh, zero. Zero? They've topped yeah, out at 39 twice, so I'll give okay. them that. They had 39 against OMG, 
and 39 against LGD. Um, but 37 against Thunder Talk, 30 against JDG, 31 against FPX. That was a 2-1. Like 31 in a 2-1 is just like, oh. Like that's my fear about EDG is that they just don't have to crush. So that's like true. what happens then? Yeah, that's a that's a fair thing. But I think like if we take into account, um, you know, Rare Adam WE might not be the highest scoring series either if it's fairly competitive. Uh, but I think that's what fair. we need to – I think the thing we have to take into account, though, is just if we think, or not we, because you know I think this way. I've said it a couple times, but you know if people are th- when people are going to make their lineups, it's basically, do you think EDG is going to sweep? And in that case, you know you're getting that games not played bonus on on multiple people, and that can that can kind of make up for even if they don't end up over 40 kills, uh, if they can push and get like mid 30s, high 30s and get the games not played bonus on four guys, then, you know, it kind of makes up for it a little bit. Uh, we do like to see, of course, our, our hope is always that our teams are getting, you know, over 20 kills a game just because we want the most fantasy points. But, you know, that game's not played bonus. Just if you're getting that on three, four people, it, it really makes a big difference in lineups a lot of the time. So they can kind of make up for it that way. But at the same time, if they if they do drop a game and then they're not getting over 40 kills in the series, that's when you run into some issues uh, right. with the scoring. So it's just kind of that's kind of what people will need to factor in. You know, do you do you think EDG are going to get the sweep? And if so, that game's not played bonus can come in pretty pretty huge on three four guys. You know, it just it adds up pretty quick. Especially with the captain, I mean, you get at yeah, least sure. 30 points there for um, with the multiplier. Um, all right. I was going to attempt to go somewhere else, but there's I don't know where else you go on the slate. Like, it's pretty simple, two games, so. Oh, yeah, it feels a lot like today. Um, you know, I like, like Rare Adam a little bit as an underdog, of course. Um, not really feeling V5 at all, but I think V5's the lowest owned team, so, you know, take some shots in multi-entry if you want. Why not? Uh, yeah, I mean, WE, still a good team. Don't think the mid lane swap really makes the hugest of differences i mean um we've seen him get by with teacher ma a lot last year and he was pretty much known for playing two champions um so it's it's not to say they can't do that again so they're still a really good team so i don't think them switching out their mid laner makes that much of a difference honestly um you know i always hold a special place in my heart for uh rare adam a little bit so sure sure uh (laughs) So we could see them definitely winning. Don't see it with V5, uh, and I think EDG are the most likely to sweep. That's just that's where I'm at. That's just my opinion, you know. No, I get it. I get it. All right. Uh, if you guys have enjoyed the video, if you could just please hit the like button below. Uh, feel free to subscribe to get all of these videos delivered uh, right to your YouTube account whenever they come out. Uh, there's also some bell feature that you can hit that you'll be notified exactly when they come out, so you can get those. Um, as always, uh, you can go to rotowire.com slash pod, that's P-O-D, to get 10 free days to the site, access to all of our League of Legends stuff, um, including the cheat sheets that we uh, have been kind of previewing a little bit in these videos. Um, I'll probably be tweeting some of those out as well, just to give an idea of what's in there. Uh, speaking of that, you can follow me at Rotowire Andrew. Uh, if you want to find Ethan, he's at uh, RW underscore Sexton, but he doesn't want any more followers, so don't even worry about it. Um, if you'd like to get in touch with us, you can also try the Rotowire Discord, which is open for all subscribers. Just go to rotowire.com slash chat. That 10 free uh, day trial also gets access to the Discord, so uh, you can try that as well. Ethan, thank you for that, and good luck on Tuesday. All right, sounds good. We'll talk to you tomorrow.